been a while since we took a look into AI War 2. I want to get into some development news and patch changes that have happened. And as we head towards the end of the year here, Zenith Onslaught has been delayed a bit. It's expected to be out in February. Not really a surprise there. And then it's been a while since we got into AI War 2. I felt it was a good time to do that here towards the end of the year. For the Zenith Onslaught expansion, that has been delayed as expected. More like February now instead of January. Multiplayer, though, is in early beta. There are still some errors that are being corrected. They're doing some fine tuning and quality of life, etc. But it has not been a problem getting through a game. It's mostly been smaller errors, nothing that's stopping it from proceeding. So, headed in the right direction. And then there are some settings that I want to get to before we address the whole big changes to the galaxy map which is going to be the key single player adjustment that's been made in recent weeks. So if we look at this, hot loading of mods and expansions is now possible. We can disable and enable, and we don't have to restart the game in order to do that. That was required previously. And then under the custom start items, we have shared allied NPC vision. This is for if you have friendly like marauders or scourge or whatever you can see what they see and also gives you more vision on other planets that you wouldn't normally have so it does unbalance that whole part of it but it's an option if you want to you know see what all of that is going on which some people had been interested in doing and the destroyables options have been tweaked some the data centers you can't crank them up as high as you used to be able to they felt that was just making it too easy to trivialize the ai progress part of the game but as sort of a compensation for that, the default does scale up now with the number of planets in the galaxy. All right, now taking a look at the galaxy map. And you can see we've got some new things here. These indicators showing a battle is currently underway. Some of the notifications have changed. There's a whole bunch of stuff down here. For example, if we do the edit, we can change the name of the planet, enter notes, priority level. This is all very similar to what was available in Classic. There's more options here. It's not just the P1 through P10. Then we've got all of these different items. Like, let's say we wanted to, you know, that planet's a trap. We wanted to avoid it. Then we can put that, and that will show up here, letting us give those little bit of extra information. The fleet status here, a ping is mostly a multiplayer issue if you want to alert somebody you're playing with in multiplayer to an issue on a planet. But... If we go to the fleet status, it's going to show any combat fleets on that planet. And then we've got you know, all the different ships that are in that fleet, the strength, etc. So that's very nice. And then, of course, the big deal is all of these different map modes. We can sort you know, by particular faction if we want, you know, show only the outguard, whatever. We're going to leave that on everybody for now. And then we can select all kinds of different stuff. Only show capturables. Okay, maybe we only want to see energy consumption. Where are we spending the most energy? We've got all of that going on in there. We can scale down. We can, of course, just go back to the normal. Or maybe we want to look for AI progress reducers. And then it'll just filter out that, etc. And let's see. Let's get back to normal. Okay. Now, the thing that I'm going to use this for is probably just finding particular ships. For example, let's just say you wanted to find all of the frigates. Then we'll just identify those. You know, we've got some frigates here. They've got these over here. Or, let's say I'm looking for all enemy iBots. There we go. We can see we've got them in these locations. So all of that is really going to be useful in... I think just allowing you to see the information at a glance on the galactic level as opposed to having to dive into a planet, come back out, dive in, come out again. And a lot of people have, who have played with this a little bit more than I have have found it to be really significant in terms of just making it easier to get around to different things. Okay, so there are a few others that we need to dive into. For example, the fleet swapping or the ship line swapping from the fleets, rather. If we want to, say, move these stingrays around. This list now, I mean, it's sorted by strength. It's all organized in even columns. We have you know, all of the color coding to represent mark levels. 
we can see easily you know where we'd be sending it to etc it's just a lot easier to deal with then the drones issue you may remember in the last patch update I was not really happy with how the drones were working they would only launch within a certain range of the enemy so that's been essentially done away with and most of the drones the ones that it's appropriate for now have something called aggro invisibility which means they won't attack guard posts and guard posts won't attack them they're just sort of invisible to each other they'll attack any ships that have been alerted and come out of the guard posts but they won't be triggering them on their own and so now you're much more able to use the drones in the traditional way of just throwing them in a system and you can have your support fleet anywhere in that system you don't have to worry about keeping it close enough to the enemy so that the drones will activate but far enough away so it doesn't get damaged much easier to use very happy with that fix and then now uh, the planetary alert levels those were bugged and they have been resolved basically when you attacked a planet it was going down too far and that also means that the raid engines now work so they will actually be triggering they've been malfunctioning for a while that'll be something to watch out for and then the issue with the engineers long-standing one that I've had since basically around launch is now working as well uh, basically it was difficult for them to be ordered to do certain things they would not always want to help mobile factories they wouldn't always want to repair ion cannons mass drivers etc but all of those issues appear to have been cleaned up so they should work well whether they're on pursuit whether they're not on pursuit should obey your orders as you direct them so that is very nice and I think that's pretty much all of the news for this particular set of patches covering 2629 to 2709 over the last several weeks and I'll be back with more patch updates as warranted thanks for watching everybody